Hello, it's Katie Forrestal, and I wanted to share with you a little bit about my thoughts on the Women's March. I'm going to read a little bit from a script because I have lots of ideas and things I want to share, but I want to make sure that I stay focused. One of the things I noticed about the Women's March, it was really hard to find a focus. What There were many different things that people were trying to say, and I totally appreciate women having a voice. That's the one thing I can stand with them on, is that I do hope to see more women having a voice, and I hope that's one of the things that the march did bring out. So I hope that you have the respect for me to listen to my voice, because I'm not trying to be condemning in any way of anyone else's thoughts. I'm only trying to share something from my perspective. So um, I was listening to this one woman talking about the march, and she was repeatedly saying how um, the view of the people in the march didn't stand for every American woman, and I would have to agree with her on that. Um, I personally would never and never have looked at Madonna as a role model. In fact, I don't think she's been good for women. I think that she's used her celebrity for things that have actually harmed women. And I also don't agree with the whole pink hat thing. Um, I understand the design of that was to um, acknowledge Donald Trump's statement and fight against it, which is okay. I mean, I understand that you don't like what he said, but I don't really get the reasoning behind wearing a vagina on your head. So. I want to talk to that a little bit because um, I, too, did not like Trump's statement when it came out. In fact, I was struggling with the whole elect election, and that actually was almost a breaking point for me. And I didn't know if I was going to vote at all. So um, I had to think about it and pray about it. And one of the things that I realized is that it's not uncommon to hear that kind of talk, and I'm not condoning it in any way whatsoever, but in a sense, he's right. It is locker talk. That doesn't make it right. But I want to ask you women out there, have you ever had a significant other, a family member, or a friend say something similar to that? Maybe they don't have the same power as Trump, but they probably said something where they thought they could use their power in some way that wasn't correct. And if so, and it was, say, 20 years ago, and that person's grown up and changed and done other things with his life, have you forgiven him, or do you still think of him as the same man? I would say we can't really judge Donald Trump, because we don't know him personally. So something he said 20 years ago, I think that's not showing very good character to still hold him to that. And um, another thing that's really interesting is that Melania did say that back in those days when he was getting involved with those talk shows that she warned him against it because she knew that they were going to lead him on to say things that he was going to regret later. And again, not an excuse, but that does tend to happen with men and maybe especially with certain personality types like his. So I think instead of looking at Donald Trump and the whole one tape and thing that he said, and I know you're probably saying, well, what about all the other things he said about the disabilities and this and all the other thing? Well, I'm not even going to go there because we all study our own research on that and we all have different opinions. And I want to focus on this one point. I don't want to go on rabbit trails. I want to focus on this one point because I think it's very important to recognize that men have been saturated in this culture with pornography and perversity everywhere they look. Donald Trump is from the period of time that a lot of us grew up in. Anyone who grew up between the 60s and the 90s have been saturated with perversity everywhere we look. And is that Donald Trump's fault? Did he have to get involved? No, but he probably did, like so many other Americans. In fact, I have some statistics on that. Uh, recently, what they're saying is... Um, 70% of men between the ages of 18 and 34 visit a porn site at least once a month. 90% of children between the ages of 16 have viewed porn. 
And the largest consumers of porn are 12 to 17 year old males. Now that is something that should really bother us. Our children are being programmed. It is like mind control. I'm actually a doctorate student and my focus is pornography. And I can't go into all the many details of everything that I'm studying. I'm working on a dissertation and hopefully I'll have it all in there, but it's just way too much. But one of the things that the focus is on is on the brain and what it does to your brain and how it initiates things in your brain and how it helps you lose control of your brain. And we're talking about our 12 year olds. I mean, most of you probably know if you study any kind of psychology that at 12 years old, you don't even have the mental capacity to make decisions rationally yet. You're still sort of believing what you hear. And if they're watching porn and they're believing that that's what sex is, I can only imagine what the future holds. So um, the, interest, the interesting thing too is that Donald Trump did just um, sign an anti-porn bill that was drafted by a group called Enough is Enough because they have studied the effects of porn and he signed that bill saying he's against porn. Now there's been other presidents that have been against it. Nixon was one, uh, Reagan and the Bushes. All of them fought against porn in some way or another some very vehemently to, to stop these people and prosecute these people. But when Clinton came in, interestingly, him and Janet Reno thought it wasn't an important enough issue to put on the economic table, so they put it aside. And in that time, that eight years that he was in office, the porn industry went crazy. Obscenity became whatever they wanted it to be. They didn't even think about the boundaries. In fact, they wanted to push the boundaries of, of, of obscenity so far that um, there was porn industry uh, businesses popping up all over the place. And what I want to talk about a little bit is Extreme Associates. This is run by a man and woman, and the man is Robert Black or Robbie Black, I think it is. The woman calls herself Lizzie Borden. She's given she gave herself this stage name when I guess when she was in the business and then she decided to become a director. And in a documentary by Frontline, um, it's called American Porn. It was done in two thousand two and you can find it on your computer. You'll get a lot of insight into Lizzie's directing and it's absolutely sickening and also very saddening because this woman is obviously a woman scorned who dealt with porn as a way to try to heal her inner demons which is what she says in her in this um frontline interview so it's not like it's word of mouth it's what she says she said she came from an alcoholic father having an alcoholic father who abused her she didn't say how but that she gets her kicks off of um, watching other women get spit on, um, having kicked and beaten and knives to their throat and making, directing scenes of kidnapping and rape and all these things that are, she believes, make women more horny and mostly that she enjoys watching it because it makes her feel better. So that's how extreme porn can be. Now, this couple was actually indicted on um, charges of obscenity in 2009 after about six years in court at taxpayers' expense. They finally got a one year and one day sentence. They also ran a boot camp for young girls, and you'll see that in the documentary. Sweet looking little beautiful and 18 year old girls are in this boot camp trying to become the best at um, putting up with all that degradation. So they have to go through being kicked and spit on and semen on them and everything else. And then they're vying for a $10,000 prize at the end to get a contract with this company. And the, wo the woman who's the uh, drill sergeant in the boot camp was actually the best friend of Lizzie Borden. And you also see in the documentary that uh, this best friend went through some of that herself. In fact, Frontline was there and filming it 
when she was being sent in to her first experience with the um, movie that they made about their rape and kidnapping and beating and, and in the end having a knife to her throat. Well, when she went into this interview, I mean to this, um, to this filming, they told her it's going to be rough but didn't tell her exactly what. So they said just go with it. The director is her best friend, Lizzie Borden. And Lizzie says, oh, it's okay, you know, she can take it, I know she can take it, and it'll be good for it, and we'll just go out after her and have lunch and go shopping, and it'll all be okay. So three years later, that woman is now running the boot camp for these 18-year-old girls. So, I mean, I really hope you watch this documentary, because it's just absolutely unbelievable. And maybe it seems like I'm going off a little bit on a tangent here, but I'm really not, because when you hear something like Donald Trump what Donald Trump said, and you hear that kind of talk everywhere. It's on broadcast TV now. Everybody has pushed the limits so far. In 1934, the FCC started, and it, I mean, an obscenity was something so minor back then. I think Bono was the first one who got fined for an obscenity, and he said the F word, but he wasn't even saying it in a, in a violent way. He was saying it more like a like he was trying to use it as a superlative, like this is effing something, you know, like a, a good thing, but unfortunately the word gets used all different ways, but he got this big fine for that, and, and, and then came people like Howard Stearns, and I think it was Billy Bush, the guy who was interviewing Trump in that interview, and all those people, and somehow they were allowed to just keep doing what they were doing, and one thing led to another, and it's just gotten so out of control, and I don't know how to fix it. I mean, it's a major problem. I'm not... I'm doing a doctorate on it, and there's, on the demand side of it, and I'm looking at it like, well, I'm not sure how to fix this, but I certainly want to make a difference, because if it continues to go on as it is, it's like a cancer that has spread so far, and it does lead to things like child sex trafficking. When there's a demand for any kind of product, that, which is what they've made people, so women with all your rights, you know, <laughs> Um, if you're thinking pornography is okay, but you're so angry at Donald Trump, then you, you gotta think about that a little bit, because what about Fifty Shades of Grey? Okay, a lot of you probably read that and said, well, you know, it's about time something for women, you know, it increases our libido or it makes us feel empowered. It's like, they're just playing the same game with you that they've been playing with the men for all these years. They've dumbed down the men. They've messed up their brains because addicted people who are addicted to pornography it is a similar addiction to alcohol or drugs where it actually stops your brain from functioning in a in a way that you can control it and this is the complicated thing but Dr. Hilton um he wrote a book called um uh it's actually a Christian it's a it's a uh My soul, my soul, we start, well, I, I, I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to put footnotes in the, in the bottom of this, so you'll be able to find it, but Dr. Hilton is a neurosurgeon, and he has proven that, what happens to the brain, so it does dumb down the brain, and it obviously causes problems with relationships, it distances men from women, it doesn't, even with couples, when they think that it's going to be good for them to stir things up, after a while, it actually isolates them because they're focused on the sex and they're not fo focused on each other. So it's really, you might as well just do it yourself and go masturbate because it's not really much different even when you're together. So it, there's many studies that prove all this. And I'm not going to have all the studies on my footnotes, but I am working on this and eventually I'm going to get a dissertation and maybe even a book out about this. So I could go on and on about all the harmful effects of porn. But what I want to say to you ladies is they are after you. You're the next on the agenda. And for the millennials who don't like corporate America and who are against Wall Street, well, here's a target for you. Instead of just saying, I hate Wall Street and everybody in Wall Street when you don't even know them personally and you don't know which ones are the bad ones, there's a bunch of them that you could go after. AT&T, Comcast. Um, actually, I have a list here on my... That one I did pull up for you to hear some of these names. Just give me a second because my computer logged up. And um, these are the people who are actually benefiting from porn in a different way. They don't actually um, make the 
produce the the films and all the other things that go with porn but they do stream them into the um here it is now where is it oh here it is okay they do stream them into all the hotels so most major major hotels chains have pornography and there's a that is a big big industry so AT&T, MCI, Time Warner, Comcast, Echo Star, GM, Hilton, Marriott, other ma major motel, hotel chains, Visa, Master Charge, AMX, and there's probably many more. They have them in these diversified portfolios. See, the business people are smart, and so are pornographers. If you watch a documentary, you'll see that. There's a Harvard um, graduate with an MBA who's one of the big pornographers in there who will give you some insight into that but anyways these people are smart and they do this thing called vertical integ integration the pornographers do this so vertical integration means I'm going to take one product and I'm going to use it in different ways so the pornographers will take a shoot and they'll have their hot camera and their I think it's called cold camera and the hot camera will get really graphic and the other camera will, will do softer more melted down versions and those soft versions go into the hotels and the hard versions go to the crazy people who by the way when they get addicted have to it escalates on them they can't be satisfied with soft porn so then it goes to hard porn and then it goes to like more extreme violence and then many times and it's proven it goes to child porn and bestiality and all kinds of crazy things so while these big businesses are making all this money using vertical integration for you business students they don't really care who's doing what and who's getting hurt and how much harm is involved in it they're just streaming this and just making money off of that so if you want a focus point for this anger that you have because I know a lot of you have anger about the way the world is that makes me think of another thing one of the reasons that the people in the like Victorian period were against over sexualizing this country is because they believed that when you spend all your time worrying about how to make your libido, libido more powerful or engaged or whatever you were wasting time that you could be using on 